tonight we're back in Genesis chapter 41. It's been a great journey. We were praying on the altar. A journey with Joseph. And all of us have a journey in our lives. And all of us have a life journey. And we need to find that. We need to recognize that. Whether you recognize it or not, you're still going on a journey. Uh, but it's so sweet when you can see the hand of the Lord uh, in your situation. Uh, you can see how God is getting you to exactly the place that you're supposed to be. So tonight, let's be jumping to Genesis chapter 41. Um, we're at the throne. Joseph is talked to the king with Pharaoh at that time. Uh, God has opened up Joseph to be able to understand the revelation of the name. Um, the king, the Pharaoh, understands that Joseph is the man. At least they can hear God. And now Joseph has been elevated to second in the land, from the prison to the palace. It's just an amazing testimony, from the prison to the palace. But you know, if he goes from the palace to the prison, God will still be in control. All the time we get excited, especially in this day in society, everybody wants to go to the top. But sometimes God wants people to go from the top to the down. So we've got to trust God whichever way we're going. Uh, let's go ahead and review just a few verses from last time. So I'm going to read 42 through 44, please. Why or why not? 
Yes, sir, go ahead. Uh, no, because first that makes his wife a, a, a priestess of a different religion, so it's not like you just getting a peasant girl that's not really practicing a religion. She grew up in the religion. She's a priestess of the religion. So he's married very hot up in this religion that's completely against his beliefs, um, society. Okay. You know, uh, of course, Pharaoh's treating good because of what he's going to do for Pharaoh. But, um, you know, uh, no, he should not marry. All right, go ahead and make the statement. Can, if I can uh, kind of concise it, Joseph made a mistake here. All right, Steve? Kelly says it's okay for Joseph to marry an ungodly woman. So I just wanted to make sure we knew that. That's when we come aside and say, that in essence, it's God's will that Joseph married this ungodly woman. All right? So we got two opposing sides. Okay. Think that Joseph is a very confident person, and and, and going with what Brother Kelly was saying himself. I mean, we standing on the outside looking at him and saying, "No, he shouldn't." But I use Solomon as an example. With all of his wisdom, he took on concubines who brought their gods. But his issue was his heart changed to those gods. Joseph's heart stays the same. I think he's confident who he who he is. You know. You can call me a lot of things, but you don't really know who I am and what my relationship is. So I think he used the situation. All right. Yes, I think at this point, Joseph is so in tune with the Lord that he can tell what he's doing. Thank you. 
Timothy had not have married her, that's like slapping Pharaoh in the face. I mean, it's going, you know, so it's like if he hadn't done it, he might not have been in that position because it's like, you know, you know, like they said, Pharaoh was basically the, you know, the god of, of, of them, you know, the Egyptians. So if he had not have done it, he would have been slapping Pharaoh in the face. And who's to say that he wouldn't say, you know, well, I got what I need for him. Now just throw it back in jail. He thinks he's, you know, too good to do what I, you know. All right. Philip? I think it's wrong, but you have to remember Ruth, a Moabite woman. So, so God can use that. If Philip was wrong, but God can still use that. Uh, Sister Sin? No, what I'm going to say is, it's the same, it's the same verse with uh, the name change. And it's it's the way it's the name Joseph has been elevated, he's still in a foreign land. 
I, I mean, think about all the scenarios. You think Joseph's heart is just making it to the top in Egypt? No, his heart is back home. He's, and he's been exiled from his people. He's in a foreign land. He wants to get back home, but he's been unable to do that because of all the things that have happened. And God is working there also. Look at this next verse. Someone read for it. Wow, what a journey. 20 plus years of his separation time for his family, and God has done a, a glorious thing, but yet it's been a long, long time. Someone read that commentary, please. Pharaoh was so pleased that he made Joseph second in command, appointed him to administer the program, first word, assured him that without his consent, no one would do anything, verse 44, and gave him a new name, Zaphnath-Kenia, verse 45. The meaning of the name is uncertain. Some suggest savior of the world. Others say it, is probably, it probably means God speaks and he lives. He also gave Asenath a Gentile to be Joseph's wife, verse 45. How could Pharaoh set a Hebrew prisoner over the land of Egypt on the basis of a dream's interpretation without waiting to see if it was true. The answer is in Proverbs 21.1. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Cream rises to the surface. Joseph was the first of many godly Jews to rise to prominence in Gentile governments. He was 30 years old when he began this ministry. It was 13 years since he was sold by his brothers. Now notice as we look at this, this whole process, we say 20 years span, he's still got to go through years of being in Egypt and running this. How many years is the family going to be? Seven years. Oh, Seven years of plenty? Seven years. Don't forget that. So you start adding those numbers together. Seven plus 13, what is it? 20. 20, and then you've got the 27. So you've got a long process. Of course, we're still approximating some dates here, even when he was uh, sold in uh, to uh, slavery with his brothers putting him in that pit. So this whole process, what I want to put on your mind, it was a long, long time. How often do we just give up? I mean, think about the days that he had to spend. And we talk about this, but the days, the weeks, the months that he spent in prison and slavery. One God... Do you hear me? God, do you hear me? This was not an instantaneous process. And I want to get that across because we go, we've gone through it just in a couple of weeks reading it through Genesis. But this took a long, long time. And in our lives, it takes time. I've, I've been learning as I've been reading the scriptures, going through the Bible again. Just patience. God is a God of patience. Our society is contrary to patience. Just about everything in our society is not for patience. We've got fast food. We've got online shopping. We've got all these other things that we want it now. We've got FedEx. We've got UPS. Two days. One day air. All of these things so that we can satisfy our longings right now. And then that seeps over into our prayer lives. You know, some of you got the five-minute prayer book. You know, where you can pray for your family and everything in five minutes. You're like, that's what I need. You know, you picked up the, the book, How to Pray in Your Car While You're Driving to Work. You got all of these things. Some of you don't cook anymore. We got microwaves and we got all this other stuff. Some of you just stop by Wendy's, pick it up, go home, sit down. All of these things that become quick. But God, it's a process that takes time. And that's tough. I think about even our church services, and I'm not just talking about Ebenezer, but oh, it used to be, and this is, this is what it used to be, that on Sunday, people would stay at church all day long. I, I, I know some of you are like, really? It was really, they would come to church, because uh, they would come on their, their horses or whatever, walk to church, and when they came to church, they wanted to stay at church, it could be a Sunday school service. They would have an evening. They would eat together, fellowship. It was a Sabbath all day that was dedicated <coughs> to the Lord. But now, we've got 15-minute service. You know, people can get in and get out. And we feel like we 
done enough for the Lord. So this whole process, I want us to learn God takes time. And a lot of our problems in our lives, even our husbands, our wives, our jobs, we just don't want to wait. But the scriptures are clear about waiting. Those that wait upon the Lord, what? Shall renew their strength. Maybe if you're tired, frustrated, let's say I'm saying busted and disgusted, start learning how to wait. Joseph had to learn how to wait even before this process. And think even now, he's been elevated. He is an instant billionaire. He could have ran back home. And I want you to deal with that fact. Why doesn't Joseph run back home? He's got a chariot. He's got everything he needs to get back home. Why? Because God is still dealing with a lot of junk that's in Joseph. He's a good man, but there's still a lot of stuff that needs to be worked out. I think he's still carrying some bitterness in his heart. And we're going to see that when we get to the point. There were some hands. Mud Munson. What does that have good to do to run back home? Yeah, he should. He would have, but he would have been with his people. You know, how are they going to track him? They don't have anything on his, you know, this is not technology, so I <laughs> But that whole process, we see so many paths that could have been, but God's whole picture, he's That's using right. all the good side, the bad side to get to what he needs to, uh, to get to. Tony. I just think that this is just an awesome success story going good. And we see Joseph in his element and his timing. Because you see so many success stories according to the world standard today that just go bad. And you end up looking at them on, on rerun for 2020 or something where somebody had it all and they had all of this and they didn't know how to handle it. And, you know, then they end up either dying or something or getting on drugs and stop there. And I think it was interesting from what you were saying to me that, you know, Joseph used that wisdom from that dream. And you think, just like, like us today, during that time of prosperity, everybody could have done pretty much what he was doing with the other people and saved some. But like you said, we so quick. When things are good and we rolling and we can roll out cash, we want everything we want not now, not living to see what's going to go down the road, thinking everything's going to be the same every day. And, you know, when the economy crashes, we, we get stuck in a rut because now it ain't rolling like that. And you're still rolling with that money, but everything is costing twice as much now, and you can't get it. So if you look at Joseph in that same situ economical situation, he had that wisdom for that, but technically... They had the knowledge from God's word from other times to have been able to sustain themselves even during that time. Amen. Amen. Good. Yes, ma'am. I, I agree that Joseph is just, he's one of us. He doesn't have all these ideas and what he's supposed to do. All he knows is that he has heard from the Lord. And that's what he's holding fast to. So all, everything that he's, he has right now to him is it, just there right now. So ride the wave and see where this is going to go. Because if God's got my back, if God hear God say, I got your back, okay, he's going to spoke, I'm cool. Mm -hmm. And he, he's set in that comfort zone. He knows that this could pass away at any given point in time. It could be a setup. There could be a whole bunch of things going. Why run back to your home, your family, where you've already got some issues? I might as well stay where I'm at. You know, let me see how this is going to work out. God's already told me what's going to happen. Now, I've done the dream. I'm just going to be here. And, and stay away. Um, I have a question for you. Okay. And, and it stems from Joseph getting out of prison and how everything has transpired from that moment and all that he has been bestowed upon him. And he's taken everything in stride. Okay. I can bring this off. Now, I'm, I'm sitting on the fence with this one, and I want some clarity from you. How, what, what is your perception on especially getting to receiving a wife and getting the name changed right right now as we speak? Um, is, is he just taking that as a grain of salt and trying to get to his task at hand? Like, that's not really an issue, whatever. But, you know, it really is a big thing, you know, um, especially with his religious beliefs and how strongly he has relied on his God, you know, uh, for him to accept being 
called out of his God-given name in Hebrew for the rest of his life in Egyptian land, and, and, and to have this Egyptian woman that's a priestess, okay, from here on, and I'm thinking, okay, is he doing this because he's just thinking about doing his job, you know, and whatever else the Pharaoh's talking about, then whatever, okay, now. I think he brought a lot of premises. One thing can be cool, we're trying to figure out the mindset. I brought thought to bring thought. I think Joseph, a lot is recorded, but a lot is not. When we come before people, I think all of us, I, think I can be honest with myself, when I come before people, I, I try and have it together. But when I'm away from people or with my family, I'm trying to keep it together, but there's struggles in my life. There's some things that I have to work through. And I think the same respect here at this point, Joseph has had to work through a lot of things. I don't think he's as confident as we suppose he is. I think he's a, a righteous man. I think he loves the Lord, but I think he has a lot of growing. Um, I think he just rolled into this. Um, and, and just, it happened. He is trusting God, but I think there's been a lot of nights of tears. There's been a lot of misunderstanding. I think he's questioning himself. Uh, questioning, okay, what is happening here? I am Mary, but I think he's numb. I really, that was brought up on our last lesson, that he's just known at this point so much. Think about just in hours, all these things that have happened. Um, I know I've, I've made some decisions in my life, and you, you come so quick, you, you just don't think, and then you get home, or you get wherever, you go, why did I make that decision? Why? In the military, I had to make decisions like that, and there were consequences of those things. But after I got to the place where I was going, I was like, that was dumb. Why did I do that? But I'm here now. And I have to work from that, that, that perspective. So I think we're going to give Joseph, uh, from this point, a lot of leeway. And give God a lot of praise. That he can work with people with issues. Is that fair? That he can work with all of our shortcomings to still save the nation. That's good. And if all of us, we would have that testimony as we sit here. That he's he worked with us. Well, all I, it, well, first of all, is there any perfect people in here? Have you, have you always made the right decision? All right, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm with fellow mess-uppers. Um, um, <laughs> we all have issues and fall short. And Joseph, no, he, he knows that if he was Jesus, then, then it would have been told he's been perfect. But he wasn't Jesus. There's only one that's been perfect. Thank God for Joseph. He's a great, but God uh, had him in his hand with all his issues and problems. Around and we'll keep working on it. The key thing is Joseph is that what he's going through is not for himself. He has to help that nation get off the street. And what is the what are the believers' job in this world? To help those that are in need. Okay, so he's got the same responsibility. I know he hasn't helped his father yet, is it? And their tribe or whatever, but it's coming. Once the issue of them coming, it's gonna happen. But the key thing is about him. I know he looks like he don't have all his marbles and tacks in his brain, but believe me, it's because of helping a nation. And that's the main thing that gives God, whatever you do here on earth, it's always for his praise. Always the praise goes in, because he's the one that does it for you. Yes, uh, the meaning is not bad. The meaning is not bad. Uh, the reveal of secret things. So I am sure that. Um, Joseph accepted the name, and, and God gave him, you know, uh, what you call it, um, the kids. Let the name change, it's okay. I think that's a good point uh, with the family coming, but I'm going to throw, we're just doing a lot of boomerangs. I'm going to throw something at you. I'm going to throw something real strong at you. There were seven years of playing in Egypt, correct? Yes. There were seven years of playing where else? Where his family was, too. And that's the issue that's in this whole scenario. I'm, I'm putting our, 
there are a lot of reasons he, he could have went back. I want to go back to my family so I can help them and assist them. But he's been ostracized, and that was brought up, and that was a good thought pattern. He's still dealing with some. When you've been when you've been sold into slavery by your brothers, you you've been in prison. You you become hardened on some things, and we're going to see that. I'm going to prove some points. He still has some issues with his brother, don't you? Don't you think? He still has some issues that's going to take some time. So I think there's a lot of things that kept him there. And, and God said, well, he was still in his heart, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to use, even though he's not going to go back, I'm going to use him in this scenario. But God could have sent Joseph. He could have somehow got him out of prison, sent Joseph directly back. And he could have used Revelation in his own home to put seven years of plenty aside so they didn't have to go to a Gentile nation to get delivered. Make sense? <laughs> it's a whole process that it is. Bodies in place. There was some hands. There was some hands. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, I guess this is what I agree with you. I don't think Joseph ever had any official authority. I don't, because he never agreed with that whole thing. When he was talking to the baby, the um, steward, he didn't say, Help me get out of the prison so I can go back home. He never asked him to go back home. He never said, I wish I could be back with my brother. I don't think. I don't know. 
we're going to deal with all those details. Go ahead. Real quick. I feel that Joseph had to be harboring anger because with his power, being second in command of all of Egypt, he could have quickly sent word, if not to tell them that it's going to be famine and, and, and you need to start storing up now, just to find out if they were alive or where they were located. I mean, he's got resources to all of Egypt. He could have found out in a day or two where his family was. I mean, I think he was carrying some serious anger. There's a lot of things that we're going to put some hand. Yes, sir, and then we'll get that next word. Yes, Joseph is able to hold on to something that's going to come way out and work. 
bit by bit, bit by bit. And I asked ourselves, how many of us would have had the willpower and the focus to stay on track for, for seven years? To say, you got all this coming in, and you're building storehouses, and you're putting it, not for your own people, but for people that are Gentiles, outside of your belief, but yet you're doing it. Why? Because you know the dream. And that's key. And as Christians, sometimes we forget the dream. We forget, it's not to make it to the top. It's really not. God has given us our job so that we can give. We can bless. We are blessed to be a what? I don't want to hear that. That's fine. We are. We are blessed to be a blessing. Not to just keep it upon ourselves. If you want to do that, you shouldn't have got saved. We are blessed to be a blessing. I was talking to my wife the other day. We were just, I, I was just in our room sitting down. I was looking at our room. I was like, all this stuff. You ever did that? You should go home and do it. That's in your house too. Where did all this stuff come from? You know, where's this stuff? And I kind of went around. I was like, yeah, I used that. I ain't used that in like years. And it's just sitting there. How many things has God allowed us to have that other folks need? This just sitting in our rooms and our houses. There's a junk man in our neighborhood. He goes around and he gets everybody's stuff that they throw away. That's that's the way he lives. You see him in a basket. If you're over in Glenwood area, he has this basket. He goes down Lee Street, down the middle of the street. With all this stuff, he goes around and digs through our trash cans and makes a living. How often have we misused revelation that God has given us for our own gain and not to bless others? And that second part, I'll get those hands. So he gathered up what? How much food? Now, this is a misconception. There, there needs to be food so they can eat, okay? But all the excess food. All right, all it. Can you imagine him dealing with that? All the excesses of Egypt, he's going to say, cut. He's budgeting. He's setting the budget factor. And I know there was some administration going, wow, why can't we have a big part? Oh, don't you see all this stuff coming in? This food and everything is flowing. Joseph is like, am I not second in charge? Did not Pharaoh set me in this position? It's the cutoff here. And I know that he hit so much flat during these seven years because he saw something that he already told the folks around, but they didn't grasp it. They heard it, but they didn't have the revelation to walk through it. And that's what Pharaoh realized. Pharaoh probably, he said, I don't have the focus to do this. I need someone that's going to stay focused in order to get us to this point. Notice as it continues on in that, seven years which were in the land of Egypt and laid up the food in the cities. He laid up in every city the food of the fields which surrounded them. Awesome plan. Seven years working. Everybody else wants to party? Joseph is working because he knows what's going to come. There was some hands. Yes. Yes. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. So this is this is tied into that same prophecy that got them to Egypt to be in bondage. So Joseph had to be there as the drawing part for them to come and get the food. That's how they got in Egypt in the first place. So he's tied up in this other prophecy that was given to him in Egypt before. Amen. That's yeah. why I think he was in there. You know, that's why I think he had something because when you study all of it, Here's a question. Which come first, the chicken or the egg? That's a tough question, you think. Which come first, the chicken or the egg? Maybe God created the egg first and put the chicken inside. And that's the issue here. This is the whole process that we're dealing with. Yes, prophecy come. They're going to be in slavery. They're going to be in bondage. Why? Why are they going to be in bondage? Why were they in bondage? Because their disobedience and sin. That's why. But God in his foresight already knew that they were going to make mistakes. And because he loved his chosen people, he already had a plan to work it out. And that's awesome. Same thing that you're saying. But this process is built on the fact I need to redeem my people because they're going to mess up. I mean... It's just wonderful. I had the foresight of my kids, for my, for my kids, everything they were going to have to go in their life, and I knew they were going to have to go through it anyway, but if I could go ahead and put some plans in place that even when they messed up, 
that they could be lifted up, that would be a God insight. And that's what God has done. Okay, they're going to go through, they're going to make this decision, they're going to be in Egypt, they're going to be in bondage because of sin, because they're going to miss the revelation here, but I got their back. And, and this whole, and that's what the beautiful love song, I just can't do song of songs, the love song of God is saying, I love you in spite of yourself. Isn't that what people want to look for in a relationship where you should? Somebody that loves you when you don't put on your makeup. <laughs> I'm telling you, you don't know anything about it. Somebody that loves you when you're breasting. <laughs> Someone who loves you when flagellations happen. <laughs> oh, yeah, I Look that up. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> about Jacob and that whole journey. Um, and that's his dad, his family. fifth of everything, and even when it was bad, they were able to sustain their whole nation and sell the other people off of one fifth of what they had collected. Can uh, someone read that next verse, though? I want to point out something in this next verse. Someone read. I love Joseph on this side, but all these issues, the focus. Can you imagine building storehouses having grain, and literally, you can't, the record, you can't keep, you've got so many grains of grain, you can't keep track of it anymore, but yet you keep saving. You keep, you know, you know that it's going to run out, and our problem is, oftentimes, we don't want to think that it's going to run out. I, the old saint said this, your, your good days are not going to always be your good days. You're going to have some bad days, and, and the farmers understood that. Uh, um, Deacon Rudd would bring that out so often in Deacon Lenny about farming. You have to lay aside. I think we need that in our mindset. We, we haven't been trained in that. That, you know, you have a season of plenty and you don't eat everything that you get. You got put put back because you got to make it through the winter. That's right. And that's why so many people are struggling in our society. God has blessed them with plenty, but they don't save that plenty which God has given them. And then when winter comes, they go, Oh, it's cold. No plants grow. Duh, you know that. It happens every year. Right? <laughs> it happens every year. It gets cold. Of course, it wasn't that cold this time. But it happens every year. The plants don't grow. The leaves come off the tree. Why do we think that cycles like this aren't going to happen in our lives? But that's our society. That's our world. And, and, and bless our president. He's doing what he can do, but our whole premise is wrong. You go through down cycles, that's the way, that's life. But people don't, that doesn't say that. That doesn't get you a, to be a president. You can't go, well, well guys, I want to be president of the United States because we're going to go in a downturn and I want to be the president that's in the downturn. To just help <laughs> us. And we're going to be happy if we can't, we're going to have budget cuts and you know, you, you ain't going to be able to go to Wendy's every week and stuff, but I got your back. I love you. But there's good days. Nobody wants to hear that. We want to be up all the time. There was some hands. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, good job. Good job. Mm. Mm. There was some hand. 
Yes, sir. Hey, man, you got a new program on TV. You might want to watch it one night. They call it Doomsday Preppers. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And all they do is they hoard food and ammunition because they think the world's going to end soon. They pray for the world to end. They don't know what to pray for. It